Hello and welcome back my friends. Today I've got a DIY gardening project to share with you. This is a set it and forget it growing system. Once you get everything installed, it's going to take off, take care of the plants and grow you some amazing crops. Stay tuned. So here are the materials and tools you'll need to put a system like this together. Only takes a few minutes. Before we jump into that though, I'm going to go over each item individually so you can follow along. All right, so the foundation to the whole setup here are these containers, which are concrete mixing containers. These are the large size 20 gallon. You can pick these up at Lowe's for about $17 currently. So they're actually a great value. They have many different uses in and around the homestead. So these containers will be acting as an automatic watering reservoir. And I'll show you how we set that up momentarily. Now for our growing pots, we're gonna be using these awesome polypropylene sandbags. These are UV resistant. Polypropylene is regarded as being a food safe plastic. And these containers are also polypropylene. So we'll be filling these up with some outdoor potting mix. The next item you're gonna need is a water vessel, something like a rain barrel, a garbage can, or even a five gallon bucket will work. This container is gonna hold our water. And in some cases we may add some nutrient to that water and it's gonna be what automatically feeds our containers here. Now the tubing I'll be using today is some of this 3 8 inch black tubing made by HydroFlow. This is mainly utilized for different water features in the garden, ponds and such, and it's nice because it's flexible and bendy and you can easily route it to your desired location. Next, you're gonna need a small little submersible pump like this here made for an aquarium. This is an 80 gallon per hour pump. You can get these really cheap. And we're gonna be setting that pump up on a timer. I've got this digital outdoor timer that I can program to allow it to come on for a couple minutes a day and flood these containers. And we'll dial it in as time goes on and the plant grows if more or less water is required. Next, I've got some grommets. These are half inch inner diameter grommets as the outer diameter of the 3 8 inch black tubing here is a half an inch. And that's gonna allow us to plug these into the system nice and tight. I'm also gonna be utilizing some of these 3 8 inch connector tees. These are barbed tees that go right into the tubing. This is gonna allow you to connect multiple containers to one pump. If you're only gonna be setting up one single container, you don't need this. You're also gonna need some of these size four stainless steel clamps. They adjust between a quarter and five eighths of an inch. I also ended up utilizing some of these three eighths inch barbed inline valves. This allows me to dial in the water flow to each particular container, whether it requires more or less water, these will come in handy. And that's all you're gonna need in the way of building materials. Now for tools, you're gonna need yourself a drill and a half inch drill bit. I'm using a Forstner bit. You're also gonna need yourself a 1 16th inch drill bit. You're gonna need a PVC vinyl cutting tool and a flathead screwdriver. All right, so the first step is to drill a half inch hole right towards the center of the top of your water vessel. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on my concrete mixing tray. Now, depending on your configuration, how you have this set up, that's gonna determine where you wanna best place your hole on these containers. For myself, since I'm gonna have the tube running down into these containers, just right at the top ends is gonna be great. And just be aware, you could forego this step. You don't necessarily have to drill your holes and connect your tubing this way. You could just drape it over the top of both containers. I'm doing it this way because it's more secure. It's gonna keep everything locked in, and this is gonna be a permanent setup. It's also going to allow me to put a lid over the top of my main watering vessel here to keep out any mosquitoes or other insects, birds, wildlife that may get into there. If we have a tube draping over the top, you'll still be able to put on a lid, but it's going to be cracked. So I'm going to drill my hole about three quarters of the way up from the bottom. And I'll pop a grommet in this hole now. We poppin' grommet truck, it ain't no thing. I pop a grommet in the hood to seal it up tight, man. We poppin' grommets over here, we poppin' grommets over there. We poppin' grommets just to see you shake it down, man. Yeah. So gather round, if you can dig the way we get down and pop a grommet with your folks to represent your town. In the comments down below, we wish to hear about it. And if you like it or you don't, it's still cool. 
with that So don't trip when it comes to this here interlude We pop promise till the end steadily keeping it true We don't stop north, south, east, and west We popping them rhymes because we popping the best We pop promise, we pop promise We pop promise, we pop promise We pop promise, we pop promise We pop promise And I'll pop a grommet in this hole now And I'll repeat that process on this container. Okay, so step one is done. Now we're gonna hook up the tubing. So the end of the tubing that you run down into your main watering vessel, whether it's a rain barrel, trash can, or a five gallon bucket, needs to go all the way to the bottom. All right, so my next step here, I'm gonna install a T. This is gonna allow me to run two lines, one to this container and one over here. We'll just stick this barb T in there. This is a really tight fit. So no need to put one of those clamps on these ends. So now I'm gonna start getting my runs laid out. So I'm gonna start by putting my hose end in my container. And you just need a little snub poking out there. Now, if you wanted to add in even more beds on one system, you could just splice in a T and continue on with what we just did. Repeat that process. Just know this, the more containers you have, the larger the pump you're probably going to need to pump the water. All right, so now we're going to set up the pump inside the main watering can. Now for this, we're going to add a clamp here at the top. We want to make sure we get this secured nice and tight. Make sure you don't over tighten this. You don't want to crack the plastic connector on the pump. Just make sure it's on there nice and secure. So this pump has some suction cups on it and you can moisten those up a bit and stick it at the bottom of your container. But it's fine if it floats around as well. Now this cord is low profile enough. You can just drape it over the top and still get that lid to snap on. All right, so we're ready to start filling our container with some water. All right, so while we're waiting for this to fill, I'm gonna get some of my sandbags prepared for soil. So what I do with these bags, because they're nice and long, is I fold over the top about four times, about two and a half, three inches on each fold. That's one fold. And the easiest way is just grip it on the sides and flip the whole thing over. Three. Four. And that gives me a nice size pot and adds a bit of rigidity to the sandbag container as well. So each one of these vessels is going to hold six of these pots. So we got a total of 12 plants that will grow here automatically all throughout the growing season. So now we're just going to fill our containers with some quality outdoor potting mix. But as you can see, these sandbags fill out to make a nice sized pot. Perfect for growing lots of different annuals, things like peppers or eggplants, cauliflower, broccoli would all do good in a system like this. You could always upscale with the potting size as well. I've had many people ask if they could use feed bags in place of the sandbags. That's a great idea. Feed bags are larger. They're going to give you enough soil medium to grow larger plants, things like full grown tomatoes. Some other plants that would do really well in a grow setup like this would be things like okra, spinach, longevity spinach, parsley, cilantro, herbs, basil. And as always, my friends, I just want to encourage you to take away whatever you can from this project, but make it your own. Mainly what I'm sharing with you here is the idea, the concept, but there's so many different ways that you could apply these ideas to fit your particular situation, your budget, and materials that you have at your disposal. 
But if you do want to follow this exact design, you can always look down below the video in the description box. I will leave links to all the different items that were used in today's build. Now, although you could probably pack in another two pots in here, I want to leave a little space for the plants to grow out and also allow adequate space around the pots for that water to be able to circulate. Now with freezing temperatures still being an issue as we're here in the winter season, I am limited as to what I can actually grow in these pots at this time. So I'm going to be plugging in some cauliflower, which is a good cool weather crop. Got some nice roots in there. And just like that, we are off to the races. Our automatic growing system is set up. All that's left to do now is to turn on the pump, fill up these containers and allow it to soak in to our sandbag pots, and then we'll set up our timer. Now, because we're gonna be watering using water from our local utility, it contains chloramines. Chances are yours probably has chlorine or chloramines as well. So what I'm gonna do is add in about a quarter teaspoon of vitamin C crystals into the water which is going to neutralize the chlorine or chloramines just another benefit to a system like this is that you have control of the water that you're using to feed your plants i just realized something what even when i unplug it it's still filling up because of the siphon effect mm. so it's not going to stop so i want to share with you this automatic grow setup that I installed the other day. I've got a few different tweaks, adjustments that I need to make, and I'm gonna to explain to you why exactly I'm doing these things. But this has already been working out wonderful. You can see in the grow pots, the moisture coming to the surface, right around the root zone of the plants. So these plants have a little bit of transplant shock as well as having gone through the recent freeze, but they all survived. They're looking just a little bit droopy for that reason. All right, so a couple things I need to change. Number one, we're not getting evenly distributed water flow into both of these containers. And also, I was having an issue with siphoning. When the pump would shut off, it would continue to flow because there was already a siphon created in the line. So there's a couple different things I'm gonna do that quickly take care of that issue. So I'm gonna start by replacing the main feed line here. I want this line to go from the pump come out of the container and go all the way to the ground so I can get a more even distribution. Now I could just add a coupling and extend it, but I can use this piece here that I'm taking out for another project. And this is just a four watt little submersible pump, practically no energy usage. You could easily set this up on a little solar system. So the theory is by having a longer main feeding tube that reaches to the ground and then teeing off from there to my growing containers, it's gonna equalize the pressure and help for a more even flow. So I'm gonna slap my tee on here. This is just a press fitting, no need for a hose clamp. Now I'm gonna size this up basically have it centered. So another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an inline valve to each one of the feeder hoses going to each container. This is gonna allow me to adjust the flow of water so I can help to equalize it if I need to. Also, this is gonna be beneficial if I'm growing different crops, I may have one container that is more water thirsty than another. So I can just dial that in easily with one of these valves. are both set on the on position. So that looks like it did the trick. We've got a nice even water flow. Now since we got more water going in here right now than here because of the previous inconsistency, I'm going to turn off this valve here. help get all the water into this bin. 
so yes i would say this was a success and i would encourage you if putting together a similar system to start your branch runs all at the same level to help to equalize the water pressure but you could have this cranked at a quarter turn let's say and so you could have one just barely feeding for less water hungry plants and one feeding at a much higher rate or turn them both on and get nice even pressure so with this little four watt pump i presume i could easily hook up at least another two garden beds and have enough pressure being created to have this automatic watering system run successfully if i do more than four beds i probably want to jump up to a larger pump so i'm going to show you what's been happening when i unplug the pump all right so it's unplugged now and you see we still have water flow that's because the siphon that was created in the system that'll keep draining all the water out of your main vessel so to solve that what we're going to do is we're going to poke a little hole here in the top of the main feeder line right at the very top this is just going to help to release that air pressure and stop the siphon from occurring but it's not going to be a large enough hole that it's going to dramatically decrease the pressure that we've created or cause a lot of overflow coming out of the hole now you could probably just use a thumbtack to create a hole i'm going to be using this 1 inch drill bit and i'm just going through one layer here boom can you see that now the water completely stopped so that's all it takes just a small little hole there little pin size hole so now i'm going to turn the system back on to show you that it's still able to pressurize and feed the growing containers So it's still running just fine and you can see there's not even any water coming out of that pinhole at the top and now when i turn the pump off completely shuts off so now i can set this pump up on a timer and have it automatically water for you know two three minutes whatever i determine is the right amount of water to fill these containers just enough so that they have a couple inches at the bottom and that they soak in to each one of these sandbag pots over the course of a couple days i don't want standing water for more than a week as that can create a habitat for mosquitoes to lay their eggs that turn into larvae that's a issue i don't want to have to deal with so right now since we're still in the winter season it's not too hot we're not getting a whole lot of sunshine i'm going to set this up so that it waters every three days for about two minutes and we'll see how that does for us another option to consider with a setup like this would be to punch a second half inch hole a few inches from the bottom as an overflow drain if you're concerned about rains coming in and flooding your system that's going to help to negate that issue any water that rises above that four inch level or wherever you put that overflow drain the water is just going to pour right out and I'm sorry for the low lighting situation, folks. We're heading into the evening now, but hopefully you can still see everything that I'm doing here. So I'm going to be adding in this seven day digital dual outlet timer. It's got room for two plugs if you need it. And this is a wonderful digital timer that you can program on a daily basis and really dial in how many minutes you want your system to flow for. The mechanical timers with the little notches that you stick in there it's really hard to get it precise as far as if you wanted your system to run for just two minutes it's going to be really hard those are more designed for like 15 minute intervals so i don't think i need to go over all the details of setting the timer it comes with a little instruction booklet you first need to plug it in for 30 minutes and let the internal battery charge before you do any programming so that's going to come at a later time so there you have it my friends a set it and forget it automatic watering setup this could come in use in so many different situations. Off-grid living, if you have an area of the yard that's harder to run water to, if you plan on going vacation or you just don't have enough time to get out and water your plants on a regular basis, this setup's gonna work for you. And what's wonderful about this is when you set up a water wicking setup like this, the soil will self-regulate how much water it needs. You can see here, there's some moisture showing up right at the top around the root zone. The soil is not overly saturated, but it's coming up and the roots are finding their way to the water. 
and it's regulating it perfectly. And by dialing in your watering intervals so that you don't have a bunch of standing water in your containers all the time, you are negating any issues that may occur with mosquitoes and you're stopping some of the other issues that could occur, such as wet feet, if you just have your pot sitting in standing water at all times. And now I can throw my lid here on my container. This is gonna keep mosquitoes out, bees from falling in there, any other wildlife from getting into there. And as I had mentioned before, you can easily add in some nutrients, some liquid coat, fish emulsion, what have you. Any liquid nutrient that you add into here is gonna automatically feed your plants as well. So maybe every couple weeks or so, I might give a little splash of some nutrient in there. Well, that's gonna do it for now, my friends. Gotta give Alice, my wife, a shout out for doing the majority of the filming for this project. If you think she did a great job today, we appreciate if you smash the thumb button on this video. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. New uploads every week, sometimes every day. And we're always giving you updates on all the different things growing on around here. So with that, thanks for watching. Have yourself a good rest of the day. Until next time, this is Dan and Alice from PlantAbundance.com. Take care. We'll be talking to you again soon.